it seems we go through everything and we'll start talking about investing and just in general one of the things you notice even for people who do invest is it, they're more reliant one thing i've noticed is like when i first started investing i was reliant more on the dopamine hit that i was getting more than like just making solid investing strategies and living that like investing in and of itself is extremely boring like once you figure it out it's not like this exciting thing of like oh i'm doing yeah. this and i'm doing this yeah. it's like you get into it and you're like okay once it does this it's like okay cool and it's extremely boring you spend more time reading and spend more time looking at a chart or something yeah. than you do actually buying or selling anything and it's just kind of like okay and it's extremely boring but because we want that ride we want that hype we want that yeah. feedback of like oh, okay like i need to do this i'm gonna do this and then you end up costing yourself so much more so can you talk a little bit as a, a, a swing trader and a stock trader how's one of the ways that you mitigate because i feel like the one of the reasons that i don't day trade or swing trade or anything like that is because i know myself like i know that if i start doing this i'm just gonna be chasing the high over and over again so how are you able to mitigate chasing after that dopamine hit and actually stay in your frame of consciousness to make sure that you're not playing yourself sure so i always like one of the big things i always talk about is make sure you have a plan and you stick to your plan whether it's a goal or a time frame or a stock that you want to trade whatever it is or even a loss right like sometimes stocks start dropping what are you gonna do like a lot of people just go oh man i hope it comes back because i needed to be i needed to make money and like this isn't a strategy you know like what's your strategy okay you're down four percent you need to cut that loss especially a lot of people they don't have tons of money to trade with and what happens is they don't want to take a small loss because they don't want to be wrong and then they end up sitting on a huge loss and if they don't have tons of money to trade with they can't trade anymore because that money is tied up in a stock that's down 30 yeah. percent so whatever your plan is you know i i say it as much as i can is like try to stick to your plan as often as you can and that also works for taking profits too right like if your goal is to make 200 dollars on a trade and you hit that 200 dollars you know yeah you want to look at the charts yeah you want to look at the news because maybe it keeps going a little bit and you don't want to just get out just because especially if it's going to keep running but it's definitely something you have to look at your your goal all right i hit my goal i made what i said i was going to make it looks like maybe this momentum is over i i don't want to be greedy i don't want to hold just because i want to try to double it like a lot of people are like wow i made 200 dollars I want to make 400 now and like, no, like you, you you had your goal and they're like yeah but I, I hit it really quick like i hit my goal really quick so why why, why won't why it wouldn't it keep going i want it well because you have to look at all the news and the charts and the technical analysis and it might and that's why you look first you don't just oh i hit my goal i sell um you look at the news but if you look at all the stuff all the charts and you go oh i think it's slowing down here now I'm gonna take it. You walk away. The first thing I say is, you know, you have your plan. But the second thing I always recommend is, when you hit your goal, is to walk away for a minute. You know, like I mean, for me, I always talk about like the goal isn't to make all the money, right? The goal is to just make enough that you're comfortable and you can live and pay your bills. That's why everyone goes to work. Like, like for for me, I would prefer to work in my home in my pajamas and not go out and have like I mean, I didn't go to college, so my jobs are gonna be like entry level stuff or sales where you're going to get yelled at by your manager all the time. And I don't I don't miss that. I didn't like it when I did. Um, that's what I'm trying to avoid. So if I'm making $12 an hour or whatever the minimum wage is somewhere, that's what I'm trying to duplicate and maybe a little bit more. And um, so I remind myself, like, I'm not trying to become a millionaire on every single trade. I don't want to be too greedy. I, I come up with my goal. I stick to my plan. When I hit my goal, usually I walk away, right? Like if I'm making $180 working at Starbucks or CVS or something, and I make a $200 on a trade, I've made what I would have made out there. So yeah. I'm done for the day, right? Like you can take the day off or cause, cause I think what a lot of people do is they, they hit their goal and they're like, now I want to double it. Yeah. Now when I got to find something else, cause that was exciting. <laughs> I got to find something else. And that's usually when they stop sticking to their plan yeah. and they throw it all out the window and they're like, they're like, no, I got, I got to find something else. And that's when they, they take on a, a risk that they're not, you know, they're not thinking clearly because they're too excited. And that that's when they end up taking a loss on something. So if they have their, if they hit $200 on their goal and then they get into a loser and they lose a hundred dollars because they were trying to be greedy, yeah. they, you know, just be happy with what you got 
take yeah. your girl, walk away. Even yeah. if it's just for like 10 minutes to like calm down for a second, go sit on the couch, scroll through TikTok or whatever, just to like decompress and be like, all right, I hit my goal. I'm not going to be stupid and try to, risk, you know, waste it. That definitely is. I mean, we talk about it all the time, like making a goal, like setting goals and making a plan. Like if you don't know, if, if you don't have some kind of guide guardrail, you're just basically in the Wild West and anything can happen. But speaking of just going back to you, you mentioned it a little bit, but I didn't even give you a chance to even talk about how you got started in investing and what got you not in trading. Oh, by the way, everyone, um, very important that we make this distinction uh, so that everybody takes knows it. When I say trading, trading is different from investing in the sense of like trading is something you're actively doing regularly. Investing is more focused on long term returns, more focused on something you do. Uh, I mainly do passively in order to like build wealth over time and compound that um, you can do both. I know Kenneth does definitely does both. Um, and he will talk. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But I just wanted you to share your story of how you got started investing. And I think it's very interesting for most people to hear about. Sure. Um, I got started investing um, really because, I mean, I don't want to, like my grandma, I would go up to her house. She lived in New York. I hope you enjoyed that little snippet of the Rambling Mind podcast. If you want more of the Rambling Mind podcast, or if you want to listen to the whole episode that you just heard, go check it out on any podcast listening platform, whether that be Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, Stitcher. I could go on and on, but you guys already know which podcast you love to use to listen to. So go check it out. Link down in the description as well. I'm going to catch you all later. Peace.